modular operating system, they do support the ability to use custom text-to-speech engines. So text-to-speech is one of those things that pretty much all the platforms do well. Um, you're not going to see many more comparisons like this. For example, in module three, there's no comparison because only Windows Phone can do all these things. So in this module, we looked at the speech synthesis integration. And uh, we looked at how we can change the voice settings, how we can use speech synthesis markup language to change the pitch, the rate of your voice and the voice itself. And then we also looked at a few advanced topics like saving audio files to a stream, uh, saving this, uh, playing speech audio in the background, even when the app is not in the foreground. And then finally, how we can even add some sound effects or some music to our speech audio streams. And finally, we did a quick comparison of the platform. So that's basically it for this module. So we'll take a 10 minute break and then we will come back right after this where Jeremy is gonna walk us through how to use voice commands and do what we call the Cortana integration so that your app can be augmented by uh, basically by the power of Cortana. See you after the break. Thank you. Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for joining us again. Jeremy, Nick, and we're gonna continue on with Cortana information. We are yes. on module three this time, and we're gonna be looking at your apps integration with Cortana and voice commands. So in the last module, Nick <clears throat> was talking about how to get the how to get your app to speak to you, basically, how to get your device to talk to you in, in uh, real language and with a voice. Um, and now we're talking not necessarily about how to talk back to your app. That's the next module. This one is how to tell Cortana how to launch your app. So it's a really common and good scenario. And, and we're going to look just kind of at the 411 on exactly how to do that. So. Uh, there's really three steps to getting this done. So these first three bullets are the, th are the three ways to implement Cortana integration. You create a VCD, you register it, and then you handle that voice command. So it's really, this is actually very easy. Yep. I want you to be encouraged, this is not a difficult concept. This is really quite easy. Now I'm gonna show you slides that walk us through the generation of these v this VCD file and what everything means. And in the slides, I'm gonna be showing you C-sharp. But then I'm going to show you an example, and I'm going to use JavaScript, OK? So it, I'll show you the same thing twice. So hopefully the concepts will just kind of be drilled right in there. And uh, then I'm going to sh talk a little bit about relevant uh, adding apps, uh, adding other languages for your app so that uh, people using other languages will be able to activate by, by way of Cortana. So let's jump right in. This is the creation of the voice command definition file, VCD. And a VCD is an XML file, so it's nice and easy. And what you're looking at right now is an actual VCD file for an app that I want to tell you about, and that is the MSDN Voice Search app. Now, I'm going to go search, I'm going to go to MSDN, and I'm going to look for the MSDN Voice Search, and you're going to see on MSDN this Voice Search app for Windows Phone 8.1 sample. It's only available in C Sharp, and that's what these slides are going to walk you through. All the code can be browsed online. You can click here and download it. You've got this whole thing. And again, I want you to be encouraged because this is the entire VCD for that app. It's not a big deal. It's not really huge. But let's step through each of these elements and see what it is that we need to define in here. You're not going to have to write it from scratch. You're going to go grab a sample from the, the documentation and paste it in and then just change your stuff. But you need to understand what each of these things are. Yeah, copy paste is your friend. Copy paste is your things. friend. Yeah, control C, control <clears> V. <throat> so the first thing you should know about is this command prefix. Now this command prefix, uh, I, I should step back, is inside of a command set. And I'll actually, I'll give you a little bit of positioning on what those command sets are for when we get to the alternate languages part, because that's what they're for. So within a command set, you have a command prefix. Now. This command prefix is either just your app's name or it's a simplified name or shorter name for your app. And Cortana is going to be able to use either of these, either the actual name for your app 
or this command prefix. So if you've got a really strangely named app with like numbers in it and stuff, and Cortana is never going to be able to read this or recognize right. this, then you put a word in there that you want to use for Cortana to recognize that this person is triggering your app. Okay. Next, you have an example. Now, this is all about informing the user what this app is going to be capable of. So this is advertised. Whenever you say, Cortana, what can I say? She's going to show a few apps at the bottom, and you're going to see this advertisement about, um, you're going to see whatever you put in that example string show up just underneath your app. But every command needs to start with that prefix. So every time you start, you want to start this app, you have to say the name of the prefix and then followed by the command. And there's a trick in there. The <clears throat> prefix does not have to directly match your app's name. Correct. So if you want a kind of a fun way to to initiate some activity, then you just um, you could like say something like "Hey there," and that would be the prefix for your app, and that's completely valid. But at the same time, it's a best practice to try to not mislead the user. That's right. So you should not use a prefix, for example, that does not match with your name. So, That's for example, right. don't go with some of the top, like Facebook and stuff like that. Don't start saying names that would normally be associated with other apps. Because yeah. if your app is misleading, unfortunately, it will be taken down. Or if it's not, I mean, and users... It may, it may not pass the store. It might not even pass That's the right. store. And users will also speak up. Yeah. Okay, now inside of this <clears throat> command set, after we've given our prefix and an example, we can add one to many commands. As many commands as we want. Actually, there's a limit on the number of commands, but I think it's 10 or oh, something like that. Oh, no, the voice command set can actually, it's, uh, it's in the hundreds. You can put it. Mm -hmm. But I remember, yeah, I'll have to look that up. I think yeah. it actually is more limited than that. So in this case, we have two commands, two distinct commands. And as it says on the screen here, this is a logical unit of user intent, okay? So... The, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a different thing, but we, we might have to organize it differently in order to recognize a different command that we want the user to say. So um, in the first one, we're trying to find text using a certain few terms. And in the second command, let me, let me go ahead and use my... Voila, in the second command, this is still... Uh, it's still recognizing the user's uh, phrase, the user's language, but in this case, it's allowing them to say whatever they want, and this NLP means that we're going to be using some natural, natural language processing on this one, okay? So there's a bit of a different intent for the first one and the second one there. And inside of that command, you, you essentially have four things. Example, one-to-many listen-fors, feedback, and a navigate. Now the example is once again so that when the user says, what can I say, this example is going to prompt them with, here's the type of thing that you can say for this command. The listen fors are just all the variations, all the different ways that a user could initiate this command. So if I said, for instance, this app's prefix is MSDN, so if I said MSDN search here, that would be identical to saying MSDN find which would be identical to saying MSDN find and then follow it up with some other words or search for and then follow it up with some other words. All of these are essentially the same code path for you as the developer once this comes into your app and you're handling it. This is all the same code path and that code path is designated by the command name here. We also have some feedback because after the user has uh, invoked that command, Cortana comes back with this feedback, both audibly and visibly, um, so that the user is sure of what they've chosen there, and they have an opportunity to hit back and cancel it if they want. Now, this last tag, the navigate, is optional if, unless you're using a Windows Silverlight app. The Silverlight apps require this because there's a hard direction between this command and the actual page that handles this command. But in all subsequent um, <coughs> versions of the phone operating system, you, um, you don't have to have that navigate because you have a little bit more of a free-form way of handling the paths as they come in. Okay, so I talked about the example and how that's going to come back to the user. I talked about the listen fors and the fact that you can have one-to-many. I talked about the feedback. Now, this is what Cortana comes back with to give you a, a sample of what was said. And by the way, in this feedback, you can use these, um, these terms that you've, that you've designated in your listen fors. And so you can really uh, add some value confirming what it is that the user said in what was recognized. Because Cortana is going to say the feedback. That's the thing. She's so going to say it. The moment that you launch the app, 
and then she understood a command, then she will confirm to the user by speaking whatever you put in feedback so the user understands, oh, she, she really got it. That's right. And just like the examples, the examples are going to show up in the what can I say. Uh -huh. So if you ask, if you go ask Cortana what can I say, you scroll down and you look at the list of apps, if you tap on an app, it's going to list all of the examples the from your VCD. That's right. So it, the examples are great because they teach your user how to use voice commands with your app. That's right. Now I showed you that these <clears throat> listen fors have some slots, some little variables that are that are surrounded by curly braces. Each of those slots is either a phrase topic or one that's not displayed here, a phrase list. Now in older versions, uh, in Windows Phone 8, um, we had um, phrase lists, but we had to designate whenever we created uh, one of these slots, we had to designate here are the seven terms that could be spoken in that slot. Okay, so you had to hard code all those in. Uh, the nice thing is here is we, we have an added functionality, this phrase topic where it's more free form. And so now we can accept this free form variable. And this free form is what's going to allow us to do some language processing. So um, the, these uh, topics are really powerful. They add a lot of, of uh, assistance. They, they're recognized in the cloud, not on the device, and they really improve the speech recognition. There are like 35% fewer errors um, when you're using these. Now let's look at a side-by-side -side comparison of the way it worked on Windows Phone 8 versus 8.1. Probably you guys are going to be working on some, <coughs> some greenfield applications where you're just going to create a Windows Phone 8.1 project, and you might not need to worry about an older one. But in case you do, here are the differences. And the uh, listen for in the 8 app has that slot in it that I'm talking about. So it has this list search terms. And then that matches the label on this phrase list. And then uh, these are the two things that can be said for that slot. And that's all. Whereas on Windows Phone 8.1, I've got a slot here called dictated search terms. And this one's using a phrase topic, brand new in Windows Phone 8.1. And this topic allows, is, it's matching based on that label. And it is using a certain scenario and a certain list of subjects that gives uh, Cortana some help in figuring out exactly what your intent is there. One thing that's really important, though, is that the phrase list is also still very useful because it will really narrow down what you can say. The thing with uh, dictation or with full topics or search, since you're covering the entire language, like English or whatever language is used by default, um, of course, there's a lot of possibilities, so the odds of getting it right are usually a little lower. Whereas with phrase lists, you're narrowing down what can be said by the user. So, and the cool thing is that while the, the commands themselves are fixed at, uh, at design time, so whenever you create a VCD, that's it. These are all the only commands that are recognized. Your app cannot add more commands at runtime. The phrase list, though, can be edited at runtime. So, for example, if it's an app about movie reviews or you want to see showtimes for movies, well, the developer won't know ahead of time what movies are playing right now, and you don't want to have to publish an app, an app update every time there's going to be an update. So what you can do is you can pre-populate the phrase list with some classic movies, maybe, or with no movies whatsoever, but then the first time the app is run, you can then query a service in the cloud, get the list of movies, edit the phrase list, and then at that point, that means that for that period of time, the movies that are currently playing in the box office will then show up and be recognized by Cortana in your voice commands. And every time you launch the app, you can recheck so that you always get an updated list of movies this way. So phrase topics are great for the search scenario you're talking about here. And it's cool that we have that choice. It's great. OK, the next step that we're going to talk about is uh, registering the VCD. Uh, so this VCD that we just created has to be registered with the app. This is a very easy step. I'm actually showing both the JavaScript and the C Sharp way of doing this on the screen at the same time. Uh, the JavaScript, the, the only difference between the actual call on this is that in JavaScript, in typical JavaScript fashion, it's a lowercase i. <laughs> And in C-sharp, it's an uppercase I. <laughs> so the actual method names in, in, the, uh, in the underlying framework here are identical. And when it's projected into JavaScript, they use JavaScript conventions. And when it's projected into C-sharp, they use C-sharp conventions. So it's pretty much the same method. In fact, it actually is the same method. It's just projected differently. And so I'm kind of using some convention in my code as well. In JavaScript, we'd create some aliases here. And we would use promises for doing an asynchronous operation. Whereas in C-sharp, we would do an await to do an asynchronous operation. But what we're essentially doing is, is 
at the very beginning when the app loads, in fact, the JavaScript version, you would do this in the default JS, and the C Sharp version, you would do this in the app class. So when the app first loads, you'll do this install command sets from the file, from, in this case, the storage file, asynchronously. It's going to go look at that XML file. Here's where we designate the XML file. And it's going to look at all those commands, and it's going to load those commands. So that's, that's it for step two. Now, and what, one thing to remember, remember is that it's important you do this every time the app is launched for two reasons. For example, first of all, <clears throat> if a user downloads your app, they will not be able to launch the app with voice commands until they've actually launched the app once because this is what triggers the, the, the registration of the voice command list. But at the same time, uh, it's possible that after a while, let's say the user never uses your app for like two weeks or, or, or more. Uh, I think the cutoff line is about two weeks. At that point, if you don't launch an app often enough, Cortana will kind of forget about your voice commands. The point is that, I mean, how many times have we downloaded an app where it sounded nice at first, we use it, but then, you know what, eh, we don't use it anymore. Or maybe we uninstalled it. So the last thing we want is our phone to be cluttered with all these voice commands for apps that we don't use. So Cortana thinks, well, if you're never launching that app, chances are you don't want to use it anymore, so I'm not going to try to remember all those commands that could technically create confusion with other voice commands. And the cool thing by registering your VCD every single time you launch the app, is even if, if, even if you launch the app via voice command, then it will re-register the VCD, resetting the timer, and therefore you'll be